Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through the accounting for both notes and the related interest payable. So notes payable is a type of liability. Depending on the length of that note, it could be a long-term liability or it could be a short-term liability. And what it really boils down to is when you classify things as current liabilities or short-term liabilities, it's because you expect to pay off the obligation within one year or there is a caveat, one operating cycle should your operating cycle last longer than a year. So common current liabilities involve accounts payable, the notes payable, which we'll talk about today, as long as other miscellaneous payables, as well as unearned revenue. But specifically focusing on notes payable today, um, notes payable are written promissory notes to pay a certain amount of money by a certain time, usually accompanied by interest. So how does this differ from an account payable? Well, an account payable is typically a day-to-day -day transaction between customer and seller, usually just involves you buy a good, agree to pay later, you get an invoice, you pay the invoice. A note payable tends to be a payment that occurs over a longer period of time, and it may be out of the course of normal business, and therefore you want some sort of written um, agreement to basically hold the other party accountable. And that written agreement is the promissory note. So this is the thing that, that, that you sign that says, I agree to pay XYZ dollars on this day, accompanied by this much interest, and so on. Um, as I mentioned, these could be current or long-term liabilities or some combination of both. You could have part of the note due within um, a year. You could have another part of the note that is due later. So you've got to be really careful about how you classify notes payable on your balance sheet. Notes typically involve three journal entries. Specifically, the day you write the note or the day you essentially borrow the money. Any time that interest is then either accrued because you hit a period end or paid out because you hit a payday. And then lastly, a final interest payment along with repaying the principal balance of the note. So those are the three common journal entries that you're going to see related to both notes and the related interest payable. Let's see an example. We're going to do this over three separate slides. We're first going to write, then we're going to deal with interest, then we're going to deal with principal payback. On November 1st, Flyer Corps borrowed $200,000 cash by writing a note. I give you the details. The note had a six-month maturity date and an APR that stands for annual percentage rate of 5%, payable at maturity. Record the journal entry when Flyer Corps writes the note and specify whether this would be a current or long-term liability on the balance sheet. So when we borrow cash, this is November 1st, we're going to debit cash because we're receiving that. And we did sign a promissory note promising to pay this later. So we record notes payable as our credit, 200000 That's a liability. Now, in this situation, is this a current or a long-term liability? Well, the note only has a six-month maturity date. Maturity date is the payback date. And so since it's going to be paid within one year, this, in this case, would be a current liability. And that's all that happens on the day we sign the note. Notice we haven't done anything with that interest rate yet because no time has passed yet. We haven't uh, uh, racked up any interest cost as of the day we sign. Now, once some time passes, that will change. So here we go. On December 31st, so remember, we signed the note on November 1st. It is now December 31st. It's two months later. Flyer Corps closed its books for the year. It recalled that it signed a note worth $200,000, six month, 5% on November 1st. Record the adjusting journal entry required at the end of the year because of this note. Now, you might be thinking, well, you don't need anything with this note. You already agreed to pay the money. Nothing has happened. The note hasn't matured yet because you still have four months left. You're not paying the interest until maturity in four months. So what do you need to worry about here? Well, this comes down to revenue and expense recognition principles. Revenue and expense recognition principles state that revenue earned in a period or expense incurred during a period must be recorded in that period. Well, Flyer Corps is closing its books, which means a period has ended, which means all of the interest, the interest costs specifically since we borrowed, that we have racked up between November 1st and December 31st, 
that needs to be recorded in this period that is closing because it occurred in the period that is closing. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math on this one. We've got a $200,000 note. It racks up 5% interest. All right, so 5% of $200,000, I believe, works out to $10,000. That is the interest per year. Now remember, only two months has gone by, right? And so we're gonna take that 10,000 and we're gonna multiply by two over 12, two months out of 12 months. So I'm gonna get my calculator out for this one. $10,000 times two over 12 works out to 1667. I'm just gonna round it up for simplicity here. Interest in current year. All right, so what do we do with that now? Oops, sorry about that. What do we do about that if we have our interest in the current year? Well, it is December 31st. We have incurred interest expense of that amount, two months of interest. Now, are we paying this on December 31st? No, we are not. We already established that the interest will get paid at note maturity. Therefore, instead of recording cash out, we have to then create a new liability called interest payable. Notice we do not lump the interest with the note. The note represents the principal. Interest gets its own liability representing the running amount of interest. And so this is all we're going to do on 1231. Now let's fast forward. April 30th. This is when the six-month note reaches maturity. Think about it. The month of November, December, January, March, whoop, skipped February, March, and then April, right? So there's your six months. So the note hits maturity at the end of April. At this point, we must pay off both the interest and the principal on the note. So April 30th, we are definitely paying a bunch of cash. And so we're going to have a credit to cash. Now, how much cash are we paying? Well, we're going to have to do a little bit of math on that. We know for a fact we're going to be paying off $200,000, but there's going to be some interest as well. And so we've got to kind of deal with those various pieces. So what I'm going to say is we know there's a credit to cash, but let's just let it sit there without a number. Let's figure out all the things we're paying off. We can sum them up, and then that will tell us the total amount of cash we need to pay. As I just mentioned, we're paying off the principal of the note. So debit note payable, $200,000. Remember that on December 31st, we racked up some interest payable. We're paying that off as well. So debit interest payable, 1667. 1667. Now, has anything else happened or is this it? Well, think about the interest, right? Just like we racked up two months of interest in the prior period, it has now been four more months since then. January, February, March, and April have all gone by. And so we need to go back to the drawing board for a minute. If you recall, we had the $200,000 note, which racks up 5% interest per year, right? Well, now four more months has gone by. And so we go times four out of 12. Pull out my calculator for that one again. 10,000 times 4 divided by 12, and that works out to 3,333. I'm just going to round it again for simplicity, which then combined with our 1667 works out to a total of $5,000. So what we're going to have here is for the four months in the current year, we have interest expense of 3333. 3, 3. Now we add up, we pay back the 200,000, we pay off the interest payable. We pay the new interest incurred in the four months of this year for a total of $205,000 of cash paid out. Notice that this makes sense because this note had an annual interest rate of 5%, which worked out to $10,000 per year. However, the note only survived six months. It only survived half a year, which means ultimately we only paid out half of the annual interest. All right, that's it for notes payable and relatedly interest payable. 
I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.